Uh, hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over Q4 of the recent weekly contest 206. Uh, check if string is transformable with substring sort operation. So this, so my implementation is like 20 lines of code, but I took about a long time because I actually spent like 10 to 15 minutes just like looking, or, well, not 15 minutes, I guess, but like 10 minutes just like looking at the problem and like even working out on paper to kind of figure it out. And you can watch me live after this. Uh, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord if you have questions as well. But the one observation that I made, uh, which I, I have to look at the tapes to see how long it took. But when I made that observation, I was like, oh, this becomes easier. And I think the confuse and I, the first two dots that I had was some, just some sort of greedy, right? Like, okay, like, you know, we need a three in the front. Can we move the three in the front? Well, yeah, we can move to three to front, but then you have to sort everything in between, and then you get into the weird place where, um, you know, it'll become three, four, five, eight, right? So that's wrong. Uh, I was like, oh, maybe there's some weird thing about sorting from the back. And then this example two also tells you, like, well, if you do, if you try to move to five to the back, uh, four one five will be one four five, so you can't sort it anymore, right? So greedy does not work, at least not in this way. Uh, so that's how I was, I was stuck for a little while, and. And the one, the key observation that I made for this problem was noticing that actually you don't need to take, like for any subgroup, you don't need to take all four um, things to transform right? or to to sort or rotate, right? So what you can do is actually just do two at a time, right? So let's say you have this subset, right? Um, and you want the two in the beginning. Well, you don't really need to care about all the other stuff, you're just sorting it by accident. And because you have unlimited number of uh, transformations, so you don't have to, like, you're not trying to minimize anything. You're just trying to ask, you know, if, if it's possible, right? So from that, um, I just broke it down to, okay, let's just do two elements at a time, right? So then what does that mean? That means that now I'm asking a similar but a different problem or different question every time, right, for greedy, which is, okay, let's say three has to be in the front. Well, can three be in the front? Uh, so the same question is instead of instead of um, instead of move, you know sorting four things at the same time, which is very disruptive, and you you lose ordering in that way. You just ask, well, three could be in the front if it is small. If you could swap it with the five, three could maybe I could just do it this way. Let me write it out a little bit. Sorry, <laughs> right? So the way that I did it. Uh, or logically thought about it is that you know can so I look at these two numbers I say okay can three go in front, in front of five the answer is yes okay let's swap them can three go in front of four the answer is yes okay let's swap them can three go in front of eight well yes so let's swap them and then now the three both matches and then you could you know delete it and then go continue again so that's the idea I did it and you could kind of if you know if you're following um this may remind you of bubble sort, right? So that's the idea. Um, and once I say bubble sort, then you have the idea of like, okay, can you bubble the next element to the front, right? And um, and and yeah, and that's kind of the the question. And and then the given that question, and the answer is yes, if and only if the the next. Uh, let's say you're looking for three. The answer is yes if three is the smallest element of all the num uh more than all the elements in front of it, right? So that's how I solve this problem. I can highlight for crap, but um, but yeah. So that's how I that's the observation that I use to solve this problem. And after that, the coding is very easy because I have like twenty lines of code. It's not that but hard. Um, basically, I use a deck. Uh, though you could just keep track of indexes as well because sometimes deck is a little bit not performing, and that's something I need to be more mindful of, but I was just worried about getting it right. And then now, uh, I I call this array, but it's kind of, kind of terrible. But basically, this just, this contains, uh, for each of, because they're only 10 digits, right? Um, so they're only 10 digits. I want to know whether, um, what, wh where are all the indexes for all 10 digits, right? So for example, in this case, um, and we can actually print it out real quick. Uh, I hope this works in terms of printing it out. Yeah, so hmm, thought I did more, but uh, but yeah, so basically, you know, the way three has index three because three is in the third place. Uh, the 
two has four. Uh, four has index one. Eight has index zero, and so forth, right? So that's kind of how I, I thought about this. And then, given the right, way da, uh, the correct data structure, the second thing to notice here is that there are only ten digits, right? So you can actually, from because there are only ten digits, you can actually brute force um, all the smaller digits ahead of it to see if it uh, any numbers in front. And what I mean by that is that okay, looking at this, okay, let's. Let's pretend this is, you know, this is the solution now, right? So, so instead of looking, because if you look at every digits in front of it, it's going to be n square, and that's going to be way too slow because n is uh, ten to the fifth. Uh, but then, the, because there are only ten, up to ten uh, unique digits, we ask a different question instead. So, for example, at this three, I ask, um, is there zero in front of it? Is there one of in front of it? Is there two in front of it? And so forth. Um, all the way up to 9, so there can only be 10, uh, 10 times 10 to the 5th. Uh, so that's how I solve this problem, and that's how I go here. Um, th at this point, it goes, uh, if there's no, no more digits of that number, then you return false. It just means, like, for, for example, in this case, you have no digits. Of, there's, no, there's no 2, so you're done. Uh, otherwise, we look at all the, number, all the digits that are smaller than it, and then we check, okay, if there's... We only check if there's a number, and if there's a number, we check the first instance of that number, right? If the first instance of that number comes before your current position of the the x that you're looking for, then you return false because that means that you can you cannot go beyond that barrier. Uh, otherwise, you just keep on checking. You check all of those, and then you pop left when you're done, meaning that you move the index by one because you know because now you got rid of this three, and then you also got rid of this three in a way. Right. So anyway, uh, so yeah, this is there are a couple of tricky observations to make, but uh, but uh, you know, again, once you notice it, it's like ten lines of or uh, fifteen lines of code. That's how people got in like four minutes and pretty quickly. But uh, but it's a very competitive programming e problem, very code force e problem. Uh, the way that I did it is in linear time. Uh, yeah, everything is linear. So for each each uh, character, uh, this is an all of one operation. So this is all of n. And again, this is uh, this loop only does at most 10 operations, so that means that uh, this does, roughly speaking, each cell or each um, each character does about 10, 10 operations. I mean, more than that, really. But you know, on the order of, the order of 10, so so everything is linear, and the space is also linear because each uh, character can only be in one place in a way. So yeah, so linear time, linear space. Um, cool. Uh, that's all I have for this problem. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'm going to solve this during the contest next. <clears throat>
<laughs> Just want to see if this works for the last case. Yep. Okay. First to this, then it'll be three four. So we can't do greedy. Because if we just do greedy for three, then that would just be wrong. <coughs> Can we do greedy from the back? Because if you do greedy from the back, and this this would get one two five, which is the same issue. So they give you they they're helpful in that they tell you that greedy is not going to work, but. Six minutes. Oh, ten, mm -hmm. I don't really have any idea to be honest. To divide and conquer in some way. What makes it force? I guess this is a pretty trivial case. Thank 
working, we only want to do two digits at the same at once. Three, four, two, one. And that is in terms of implementation as well. This three has to smaller than, so we could do a ten operation. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Hmm. to be cues. Don't think that matters, but
That was a hard one. Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, th thanks for watching. Thanks for, you know, supporting. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. And yeah, and check out me solving the rest of the contest somewhere in the link below. Bye-bye. Uh,